I'm Nicole with One Geek's Craft, and today we're going to be making a table for our living room. This map has been brewing in our Discord server for some time now. Both myself and a Patreon member had found it and simultaneously decided to start working on it. Now our Patreon member did beat us to the punch on making this one. A link to her work will be in the description below. She has posted it all over Instagram and it's fantastic. At the time that they started working on this, I was also working on it to try to figure out a way to make this bigger and better for the YouTube channel. And I originally wanted to make it just big, similar to how we did the high roll map. But then I thought about it and realized we've done that already. So how do I do this different? I decided I wanted to make a functional piece of furniture. Let's get started. Because of the insane amount of details I've shoved into this map, there are way more pieces than there normally are. So I'm gonna be enlisting the help of Turi. <laughs> okay, as you can see, we have all the laser cut pieces, table legs, pieces of oak, a glass sheet, and MDF board. I'm gonna start by getting a base Nicole can work with. This board of MDF is left over from our new desk build, but to make it work, I'm gonna get it on the table saw and cut it down to size. Then she can start assembly and painting all those trees. You gave yourself all the trees. I do it to myself. I know. Thank you. Oh good. Man, that's not a table saw. I started to build this map like every other map. I painted the engraves on the land masses with black Vallejo primer, and then painted the acrylic panels engraves with white paint. Then I proceeded to use an extraordinary amount of glue with no regard to future Nicole and how it would affect her attempts to align anything. Just wait, you'll see. It's at this point that I realized that none of my pieces were aligned because the acrylic panel didn't fit, and I start trying to chisel away at the piece to save any pieces that I can. So I messed up kind of a bit to the point where I'm going to just restart everything. The biggest issue on this piece was alignment. I could not get the acrylic panel to sit nicely where it was supposed to. That's a mixture of how the frame was set up as well as how the land masses were inlaid. We're going to use a board that's not cut down to size yet and lay everything out basically right in the middle. I'll use a router to clean it up later. Then we're going to use some pin nails instead of glue. We're going to reattach the land masses in the acrylic panel in as just a spacer to line up where we're going to be putting the frame. The perfect rectangle that is the acrylic panel and the land masses needs to be aligned before screwing it all into place. So I'm going to do that and just kind of start over. These things happen. You shouldn't let them deter you from completing the project. Just know that uh, it's a little bit of a waste of material, but you learn something along the way. Let's get started for the second time. Okay, round two. Using screws, I secured the land masses area first. This confirmed that all the pieces that would go around them would be perfectly square and exactly where they needed to be. I pin nailed in all the pieces with a tiny bit of glue on the backs just to make sure that they stayed. Using E6000, I glued down the land masses and re-glued all the little islands in place. Before resin, I decided to cover the entire board in matte Mod Podge. I did this to avoid any issues with the MDF board. I've never used resin with this specific kind of board, so I wanted to seal it before pouring. I used the Mod Podge as well to seal the edges from any resin leaking. Some super glue was used to reinforce these seams, but not nearly the amount that was used in round one. 
Then I painted the engraves again before I poured the resin. I do this before just so I don't get any black paint on the shiny blue resin. Finally, it's resin time, and the first resin pour in the new house. I used a concoction of pigments and inks with some of my Alumalite Amazing Clear Cast resin. I used a volume calculator to estimate just about how much resin I would need, and then matched the amounts by eye level. I mixed together all the colors, and then after about three full minutes of mixing, it was fully incorporated and I poured it all in. So all the resin is poured. Resin has a way of creeping up the sides of anything that it is poured into. Is there, a, what's the science term for that? Uh, <laughs> I think it's part of the surface tension. Is it just surface tension? I don't know. Uh, but the reason that matters right now is because the acrylic panel that fits normally perfectly in here doesn't quite fit. So what we need to do is go in there and trim out any of the areas where it creeped up. How I'm gonna do that is with a chisel and a wooden mallet. And we're just gonna go around the entire rim and remove all the excess. Is it just surface tension? Like, what is the term? The meniscus, concave surface of a liquid resulting from surface tension. Because that's how you, to read a graduated cylinder. Oh yeah, you read off the meniscus thing. Yeah. Science. Pretty, 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 pretty right. dang close. The acrylic panel fits. Now it's time to paint all the trees. Let's go. So I've gotten to the part where I need to now paint the mountains and I don't exactly know how I want to do that or what I want them to look like. So I'm just gonna try a few things. We'll just see how they turn out. I painted all the mountains with a base coat of gray and then came back later with a dry brush to add various coloring details to the different mountain ranges. You can see this more in the final shots, but for now, I'm gonna keep you in suspense. The veneer I have is adhesive backed, so I removed the protective film to put all the pieces in place. Once they were down, I removed the masking tape. This is a new brand of veneer for me, and it is actually unfinished on top. So after the masking was removed, I applied some waterlock sealer and finish. I have a small but seemingly endless bottle of this stuff, and it worked great for sealing these veneer pieces.
Once the water locks was dry, I placed in all the acrylic pieces for a final test fit, and then removed the protective layers to see how it all looked. Using some paint pens, I added some additional details to the pokeballs in the corners. Then it was time to give it back to Turi to do some more things with power tools. I'm gonna cut this part out earlier in the process. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, probably. Everything's okay, but that was a lot more work on the side of it could easily get screwed up. Well, don't screw it up! Right! That's the plan. Turi removed the extra materials from the side with a bandsaw and then shaved off the remaining bits with the router. After a bit of dust cleanup, I was able to permanently attach the acrylic panel into its forever home and give the table its legs. Back in the garage, Turi used the miter saw to make some oak surround pieces. These pieces serve two purposes. One, to hide the many layers of MDF that make this map, and two, to hold a piece of tempered glass in place. This glass sheet is there to protect the map from the daily grind of being a functional table. Once Turi was done cutting out all the pieces, I used glue and pin nails to hold them all in place. To finish it all off, we use Danish oil on the red oak side pieces. Now it's time for some final shots. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters. This was our first project that we made completely in our new workshop. If you want to make this table yourself, we will have all the files available on Patreon. All the items used to make this map are in the description below. We will also put up files to make this map like a traditional When Geeks Craft map if you really don't want to have a Pokemon themed end table in your home. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.